Hi, Omano IT here again. So today we will talk about the Alienware Command Center. There's a lot of bad things that you can read about this program and I can assure you 99% of the people are right. This program is very badly coded. I mean, it's unbelievably buggy slow and sometimes it doesn't even do the things that you want to do and it's also very very confusing because the things that you want to do and where do you expect them to do are not there where you expect them to be this video is let's say especially for beginners maybe you have bought a new Alienware machine and now you are fighting with this program and you don't know how to use it and well I'm here to help you and I will tell you exactly how to use this program so let's start so first things first we want to open the program so if you have the newest version installed which by the way is a little bit tricky to do and well as a matter of fact that's the first thing i want to show you how to get the newest version of alienware command center so first things first i suggest that we start to install the newest version of the alienware command center so we are on the same page and so that you know how to install it because as i said it's a little bit confusing so um what i mean with confusing is this one so if you open the alienware command center it looks like this so if you press download then nothing will happen I mean, it says that it's downloading something, but in reality, it doesn't do anything. Why do I say that it doesn't do anything? Because, so, if you close the program and you open it again, it will show the same message again. That's because this version is buggy and Dell can't seem to find a solution to it. Just press skip. So, and same thing here. If you press here, you get the same window. So, again, if you click download, it seems like it's installing something, but I've waited at least two hours and you get the same, same error again. So, this is the problem that I mean. So, close it. So, and how do we install it now? So, and the method to install the Alienware command center correctly is, well, first we have to uninstall it, command center. So I can actually show you how to install it correctly. So, first things first, we open up the setup we press install and this window should pop up now we wait so once you see this window you press remove Click next. Yes. Now the computer is uninstalling the Alienware command center. So uninstall complete. Finish. So what do we have next? Close. So open up C Cleaner. 
or any other registry cleaner software. I like to use CCleaner. We go to registry, scan for issues. And now you press this one and click no. Then fix all selected issues. Close. Close. So after this, you restart your computer. So after you have restarted your computer, we are ready to install it again. You might have noticed that I have three Dell programs here. These three programs are related to each other. The first one is the newest version of the Alienware commands in. But if you look closely, there is an issue with this program. If you look at the size, it's only 11.9 megabytes. The previous version of the Alienware command center has 908 megabytes or is 908 megabyte big. So there's a huge difference and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that there is something wrong. So this one is the Alienware overclock setting control application. With this application, Alienware Command Center is able to control all your overclocking features, such as CPU voltage, CPU speed, um, PL1 wattage, PL2 wattage, and also your fan profiles. If you do not install this program, you might get error warnings in the Alienware Command Center, but I will show you this later. So now we can try to install the newest version because that's what we care the most. But I will show you that it's actually not possible. So click install. So now it's opening, but so you see, it doesn't load. Here should be a green stripe that indicates how far the installation is going, but you can't see anything. Now we can try again. We can close it. Close. Okay, this looks good. Let's try again. Install. Now sometimes it shows a green stripe like now, but it doesn't go further than this. So again, task manager and kick it close. So to actually install the Anyway command center, you have to install the previous version, not the newest, but the previous one. So in my case, it's the 5.4.35.0. So double click, install. Now you see, it looks entirely different and if you open up the task manager, the name of the process is also different. So close the task manager and now we wait. Okay, click next, accept, yeah, whatever whatever complete next install now this should take about a couple of seconds so an alienware command center is really process heavy it eats a lot of processing and memory power 
but it's essential to Alienware PCs. I've tried to um, control the fans with HWinfo, but it doesn't work that good. So after the installation is done, finish. Let's actually see what version we got. So this version, which we have installed right now, is 5.4.35.0. To update the Alienware Center correctly, we have to do this with the Microsoft Store. What a surprise. So let's maximize it. We go to library, go to anyway command center, and we click update. Come on. So now it's updating. Again, it only works if you do this with Microsoft Store. You see, the update has actually 51.96 megabytes and not 11.9. So now it's done. So after we have closed Microsoft Store, we open the Alienware Command Center. And now it says additional components required. We click download, but this is the same window which I told you about at the very beginning of the video. So it doesn't do nothing actually. Once we have closed the Alienware Command Center, go ahead and install the Alienware Overclock Control. Oh, actually, I have it already installed, but I will show you the process. We uninstall it. Okay, close, close, click again, install. Install. So, and now we have to restart the computer. See you later. Hello again, guys. So I restarted the computer. Now let's see how far we got. So again, press skip. Now you see that it looks a little bit dif a little bit different. Now you have the screen box here on the top, and if you Press function and F1, you will actually see a G here on the top after you close the program and open it again. And this indicates also that now we have installed the newest version of the Alienware Command Center. If we want to be 100% sure, we go to the anime command center here in the settings and ta-da! We see we have successfully upgraded to the newest version 5.5.0.0. Now officially we have the newest version of the Alienware command center. Congratulations! <laughs> it shouldn't be that difficult honestly but it is what it is or home screen this is where almost everything happens so we begin from the uppermost left corner and work our way to the right so this is just the logo this is your home screen where we are now and how do we know that we are in the home screen? Well, you see that wherever you are is colored. On the home screen, you will see that 
you can add themes to certain games. How do we do this? And the other question should be, what is it? In layman's term, you can assign to certain games certain themes you wish your laptop or computer to have. For example, if you want, for example, um, Cyberpunk 2077, if you want this game to assign a theme, you go to the library here on the top, choose a game which you want to configure, and you go to the left and you see the themes which you can select. Now, at this time, I don't have a theme, but I will show you this in the future, how to do this. And also, you can choose which fan profile you want to assign to this game, and also which power option. So, in other words, after you open this game, Anyway, Command Center will automatically apply these settings to the corresponding game. So, and on the bottom left corner, you see your Alienware device. So, if we go to the right, you see that we can choose here different color schemes. I will go into that later. The next buttons are for me the most important in the whole Alienware command center. The first one is the overclock button. This is a warning. Please read it carefully. I'm not responsible for any errors that you're doing or for anything what you're doing. This is just a tutorial. So click OK. Now you can choose your different overclock settings either overclock off, overclock one or overclock two. These two are settings which I have created. And how to do this, I will show you later also. So the next one is the most important button for me. It's your preferred um, fan profile. So now the PC is in quiet mode. You can choose between quiet mode, battery saver, full speed, performance and balanced. Let's go from the bottom to the top. Quiet means that the fans will spin as slowly and as seldomly as possible to maintain the quietest possible environment, let's say. This also means that you are not able to get the maximum performance because the fans are not running high enough. You won't get good temperatures and if you won't get good temperatures, you can't maximize the performance of the CPU. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that simple. Battery saver is, as the name implies, everything uh, will be done to maximize your battery life. And which I use the most is full speed. Well, it's self explanatory, I think. With full speed, you will maximize the speed of the fans. I think the maximum RPM is about 5400 or something like this, but. I'm not sure about that, but nonetheless, with full speed, you try to get the best possible performance and um, at the same time, of course, the best possible cooling. Since the fans are spinning faster, the CPU is able to push out the heat more efficiently and much faster. The next one is my PC hung up for a second. Yeah, this was the thing that I wanted to talk about. Sometimes when you change fan profile, your PC freezes for a couple of seconds, but then everything is fine. So performance allows you to get the maximum performance out of your GPU. Means that your GPU actually can use uh, its full 170 
five watts of performance and also the fans um, ramp up at 70 percent i think don't quote me on that but we can actually see this uh, later and balance a balance thing <laughs> between maximum performance and maximum battery saving capabilities so these are the power plants um, if you haven't watched my video it's up here I talk about the power plants if you don't have the time or don't want to watch it I will explain it to you again <laughs> so I think the laptops which um, have been produced after 2019 have all a thing that is called modern standby and if your laptop supports modern standby you are not able to change your power plan manually there is a workaround in order to do this you have to go to group policy go to administrative templates go to system then go to power management then specify a custom plan now if you press enable you can set a specific power plan and this power plan will be used no matter what you do with your device for example if you want the maximum possible performance you might want to choose the ultimate power plan if you want to use the ultimate power plan you have to press enable and paste this code inside string c string v press enter so and now i will show you what we have changed so now you see now you have locked it to ultimate performance and you're not able to change it whatsoever it will always be an ultimate performance so and this is also the problem with this modern standby i mean it's there to save battery life and and whatnot but we have bought an alienware and people who buy alienwares want the maximum performance so that's just bogus again it is what it is i'm not complaining i'm just saying how the things are and i am showing you how to solve these problems me personally i don't want my pc to always be in ultimate performance I don't need 5 gigahertz when I watch YouTube videos or writing essays. I don't want this. So, and because of that, I go back to the group policy and I will revert my settings, power management, specify not configured apply okay so refresh 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 close it open again now it's just in balance mode so now you may wonder okay i mean you said you bought an anywhere you want maximum performance why then you just only want balance mode and how do you change this? It's so simple. You just press function key and F1. After this, you will see that high performance mode has been enabled, 
which means Ta-da! <laughs> High performance mode has been activated through the Anyway Command Center. Yes, it's very confusing, but once you know what to look for, it's just so easy. So, and how do we know that we are in high performance mode? Just here on this G. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this slider here. Where with the slider you can just change between a dark theme and a light theme. I prefer the dark theme actually. So I will leave it that way. Next one are the settings. Um, your user interface highlight color. I talk about this blue and 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 <laughs> this blue. So in short terms, it just what color you want to use. I like to use the green one, let's say. Now everything changes to green, green and green. So you get the idea. So next one is these funny animations here behind. This one is a particle. I like this one, but you can change it between off, so nothing, smoke, looks like this one. It's also very mesmerizing. Then galaxy, looks like a galaxy. Oh, I can see us here. Oh, <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, and waveform. This is my favorite one. So, the next setting is miscellaneous diagnostic data. Um, I actually choose yes. Because if something goes wrong with the program, then it will be automatically sent to Dell and maybe they will try to fix it. That's why I have clicked yes. So Alien FX API. So um, certain games have certain themes which you can choose from. Unfortunately, I don't have any games that support this. But um, you can choose this setting if you want this to be enabled or not. So I click uh, disable since I don't have any games that support this. So then we go to profile. Automatic profile means that you can choose a specific profile to be active once you open the Alienware command center. I've chosen yes in regards of wanting full speed and high performance. So in other words, I want full speed and high performance once I open the Alienware command center. Feedback, no. Walkthrough, it's <laughs> what we are doing right now, <laughs> disable. And yes, and this allows you to reset all the walkthroughs if you wanna see them again. I don't want to, that's why I will close the settings. So, and if you want to read everything about the LMA command center, you can do this right here. So we exit out. Now let's go to the second one, library. So these are my games that I have installed on my PC. And you can zoom out or zoom in. You can sort them also alphabetically. 
last played or the last edit. So I usually go with alphabetical. And if you have games uh, which are not listed here, you can also add them manually with this button. Maybe I want superposition benchmark add to library. Yes. Okay. Now it's here. Now I can add certain themes to certain games or programs. Let's do this now. Let's say, let's choose Universe Sandbox. So now I can assign a theme to Universe Sandbox. I can also assign a fan profile and I also can assign certain power plants to this program. So let's do this right now. No theme. We want to add a new FX theme. So now we can choose different zones that we want to configure. We can configure the alien head, which is on the bottom, uh, on the top right corner, sorry, of the keyboard. And let's say we want this to be green. So that's it. And we want the stadium. The stadium is the light tron behind. It's this one. Oh, actually, it was the alien head behind. This is what I mean with confusing. So, okay, if you click on the alien head, it's also highlighted here. So, good. Now let's say we want this in red and then it will change to red. And let's say we want the stadium light to be blue. Great. So now we have customized. Let's go to save theme. Good, saved. So, and every time I open Universe Sandbox, the Alienware head behind the screen will be red and the stadium light behind will be blue. Okay, now you get the idea. Let's go to the next one. So here you can choose the overall look of the laptop, regardless what programs you're using or not using. Yeah, you can see here the theme that we have created previously with the game. So to change the lighting, we click here and here we can choose if we want to either change the lighting of the keyboard or the rest of the lighting. I start with the rest. I click here and these are the zones that we can change. If you want a cohesive look of your device, you click here on all zones and then all zones will have the lighting effect that you select and that you want. Let's say for example I want the laptop to have a red color. I click here at all zones then I select color and here at this color wheel I can choose whatever color I want. I mean this is this is really good. So I choose red. Once I've done that, I click save theme. Now if we want to check, we can go here at the bottom and we see that we have changed the alienware head and the stadium light in red. So if we want to change the color of the keyboard, we click here on the top. And here you can individually assign certain colors to each key. I usually go with a unanimous color, which means either one static color 
or just a rainbow wave. I don't like having 50,000 different colors. Then we click save and it has been saved successfully. That's good. So now I want to show you the different effects. So in these are the different settings and how they look. This is the static color. Okay. And you can also choose the brightness zero to 100. Next one is morph. Let's use a nice green one. It's set to fast and medium duration. Let's change it up. Tempo slow and duration low. Again, you can customize it as much as you want. Duration is high. Tempo slow. Tempo fast. Duration low. Brightness is also changeable. So next one is breathing. This one I like very much. So brightness is also changeable. This one is breathing. Duration low looks like this. Medium, high. So the next one is spectrum. Duration low, medium, and high. So next one is rainbow wave. This is also very nice. Duration low. Duration medium and duration high. So, and the next one is static default blue. This is the original Alienware blue. So, I like the breathing one in dark blue and this is the one I'm choosing. So let's go back to the FX window. Um, these two are shortcuts. If you want your lighting to just press go dim. If you want your PC to be completely dark just go here and press dark and everything will shut off. Next one is macro. You can assign certain function to F2 to F6. You can create them by pressing the green arrow. You can give it a name, test, and here you hit some key. For example, um, shift and R. Once you've done that, you click here and choose in which folder you want to save them. Let's go my macro and save. So yeah, and then you can assign this combination to to the keys. So next one is the fusion window. This is the main window where you will do all your undervolting and all this kinds of stuff. You will see many things. It could be overwhelming at first, but I will try my best to explain it to you. So let's start on the left side. 
on the left side you have one, two, three, four subcategories. The first one is your overclocking settings indicated by this green stripe here and green color. Whichever category is highlighted in green, you know that you are or you have selected them. So once you click here, here, you can choose between different overclock presets. Once you are in the section, the first thing you will see is overclock one and overclock two and new profile and a white cross or plus sign. Oh, okay, much better. <laughs> much better lighting. So these two are overclock presets made by Dell slash Alienware and you can select them by hovering over them going to the right and press the green arrow. Let's try this one. Press. Now it's working. And now we have applied the overclock one settings to our CPU. And how do we know what has been changed? It's easy when you know where to look for. Just go here on the CPU to advanced view. So now we see what settings have been applied from the overclock one presets. So let's work our way from the top to the bottom. So overclock one has put our CPU to a max of 5.1 gigahertz. This is way too much, but we will go in much more detail later. So here you can choose your frequency between 3.6 and 5.1. You can also see that the color of this stripe is changing the more you go to the right. So the green section means that you're good to go. And orange means that you have to be careful. Careful in terms of um, performance loss and also thermal issues. Because the faster your CPU runs, the harder it gets. So, but I don't want to change anything because I just want to show you what overclock uh, one changes. So frequency at the max, 5.1. So, and this is the voltage. So do you want your voltage to be auto-managed or do you want to set it manual? I always, for 99% of the time, suggest to use auto-managed. Just put auto-managed. But that's not what overclock uh, one does. So let's keep it here manual and also you can change your voltage between 1.35 and 1.55 and as you might see the voltage changes depending on how much frequency you give to your CPU. If your CPU only has 3.6 gigahertz then it also needs less voltage as for example 5.1 you see there is a 0.35 difference in voltages voltage offset you can also play around here you see too less and too much it's not good either so yes you have to play around so no i don't want to save it no Oh, yeah, 
sorry so same thing goes for overclock too again this is what the overclock 2 does okay good let's go back let's go to the next one gpu this is your speed temperature use it and memory also the same goes for your cpu temperature by clicking on the temperature you can choose between celsius and uh, fahrenheit so since celsius is more scientific i keep it at centigrade okay so next one is the gpu let's take a look at the advanced view um this one the power limit you are not able to change it because it's a factory lock thermal limits um the thermal limit says or it defines the threshold um, at which the GPU um, works to 100%. Um, that means that if the GPU reaches 88 centigrade, then it will throttle. Everything up to 87, including 87, your CPU, uh, your GPU will, will run at full throttle. So here you can choose your core clock. Core clock is very sensitive, opposed to the memory clock. So actually, I've gone up to plus 900 megahertz with MSI afterburner and all ran stable whilst the GPU crashed at 300 megahertz so next one is memory clock um, here you cannot change anything this is just for viewing your voltages and your timings and your latency good now let's try to play around with a new profile overclock profile so we do this by either clicking on new profile or clicking the white cross it's the same um, you can delete also profiles by going to the profile which you want to delete in my case it's this one i don't want this anymore i hover over it right click and go delete and click yes so now it has been deleted so now we hover over the profile that we want to change we click the green check mark and now we go to advanced view first things first we want the voltage to be auto managed so there's a simple reason why and i will tell you this a little bit later so here you can choose your frequency I usually will not go higher than let's say 4.4 to 4.5 so let's go to 4.3 that's a good middle thing so auto manage we want auto manage because I actually don't know how many voltages your CPU needs at 4.3 gigahertz I mean um, it says that it just needs 
um, one volt to work properly but this is not something set in stone it's always something that um, changes with your load and your processing power so you can actually never be sure if you have your right voltage or not um, yeah and you can also see this um, at this slider here because there is no green color you see it's just orange that's why i don't want to play with this that's why i go to auto managed and it will manage the voltage automatically so now you might think okay if i am not able to set my voltage manually how am i supposed to undervolt my cpu how am i supposed to do that this is very easy we do this by changing the voltage offset so now you might think okay um i set this to minus 100 uh, mini volts but how do i know the voltage that has the cpu now um first thing you don't have to know what voltage your cpu is currently using and secondly that's the reason why you also choose auto managed because regardless what voltage your CPU um, will be using, it will always have your voltage offset that you are selecting here down. For example, if you are or if you choose 5.1 gigahertz, and let's say that your CPU demands one point. 4 volt this is just an example it doesn't mean that it's actually using 1.4 volts it's just a demonstration to let you think about it how this will work so for example let's say you choose 5.1 gigahertz and let's say for example that your cpu uses an automatically selected voltage of 1.4 volts and furthermore you want a voltage offset of minus 100 millivolts so now theoretically it means that your um, cpu now will oh, come on let's go to 1.4 so so if you choose a voltage offset of minus 100 millivolt, now it means that your CPU is actually using 1.3 volts. Do you understand this? I hope so. <laughs> so in other words, regardless of the voltage that is selected automatically by the CPU, your voltage offset will be always the same. And the amount of millivolts that you're choosing will be subtracted uh, from the auto selected voltage that your CPU uses automatically. Yes, I hope you got it. Um, yeah, so always use auto managed and your desired voltage offset. Okay, so if you want your voltage offset to be minus 55, your CPU will always have the difference of minus 55 millivolts, regardless of what voltage um, it has set by itself automatically so um, usually as I said before I go to 4.3 go auto managed and set it to minus 100 millivolts this is my setting 
if I use Alienware Command Center. But usually I almost use Throttle Stop. So after you have selected the parameters that you want, you go here, test and save. Now it's testing. Test passed. Yay! <laughs> Click save. So now you see that it has been saved. Good. So the next subcategory is your fan profile. So here we have five fan profiles. These are the same that you find here. Same thing goes for your overclocking and your power plants. So let's go to the thermals. So I usually have mine always at full speed, which means fan speed 100%. Let's wait until they ramp up. Come on. You see now it's lagging. It doesn't change the fan speed. Hmm. Let's activate the or let's deactivate the high performance mode. Okay, now it's changing. So um okay, let's start from the top and work our way down. First one is balance mode. If you choose balance mode, your fan will speed up to uh, there is no mean, so yeah, let's just compare it like this one. Okay, it's about 60 to 66 percent both CPU fans. If you go to performance, why doesn't it change? Why? Let me try this. Let's go here and go to balance. Oh, now it's changing. Okay. Okay, in the previous version, you could change your thermal profiles by just clicking on them, but now it doesn't work anymore. So you have to actually go to your home screen and change it via the home screen, which is dumb, but it is what it is. And we have to work with this one. So balanced. Okay, we have chosen balanced and balanced mode spins your fans up to 52 to 66%. Okay, next one is for performance. I think Oh no, they're ramping up. Around 75 to 80%, I think. It's much more slow. It's much slower than before. I don't know why. Maybe this version is laggy. Okay, apparently performance mode gives you 70% of your total fan speed. Okay. 
I'm sure the previous version gave you about 80%. Okay, nonetheless, let's go back. Go to... Okay, we have seen balanced. Let's go to battery saver. Let's see how it goes down. Come on. Yes, it goes back. Mm -hmm. It's very strange that it doesn't change. If I click here. Now by clicking here the chain you can link it to a specific game. Doesn't work by clicking on this. So stupid. Okay, let's go to full speed. Come on. Oh, everything at 100%. That's good. You can also hear it. So, yes, you can also check out the history. And you can also set it manually. I never do this. Because I have my fans almost always at full speed. So, okay, you can do this with, uh, with each of every four fans. Okay, I keep it at full speed. Next one is your power management. This is automatically done when you go into the high performance mode. High performance mode enabled. After you enable it, you have, let me close it. And as we have talked before, high performance mode. And after you reopen your Anyway, command center, it's also active and visible here. It's so stupid sometimes. Here, so now you can choose various things, turn off display, sleep and alien effects, and you can also, um, yeah, just do a new profile. So the next one is Dolby Audio, Dolby Atmos. Although the speakers suck really bad, I don't know how, but they got a Dolby certification. So, yeah, I actually have never opened it up. So it's the first time for me scrolling through the settings. Let's see. Get ready to experience immersive moving audio for your games and movies such a lie okay doesn't want to open now so home products okay gotcha settings Oh, okay, got it. Okay, now I think you can choose here different types of equalizers and different settings. Oh, okay, good. But I don't use this, so I can actually. Um, Disable it. 
Yeah, I don't need that. Close and that's all, guys. I hope you like this video. Um, yeah, please subscribe, leave a like, and see you next time. Bye.